Hey guys, before we begin, I just needed to tell you about a new YouTube channel I've found called Overly Sarcastic Productions. Simply put, if you like my channel, there's a huge chance you will love their channel. It was thanks to the YouTube algorithm that I actually discovered this channel, thanks to a randomly suggested video. And from watching that video and one more, I subscribed and then proceeded to binge watch several more. They basically do the same thing that I do, which is to look at history and other educational topics and present it in an entertaining and easily absorbable way. Which is the key. History, education, and even any technical subject can be done fun and enjoyable with humour and also just enthusiasm, because the best thing is when you, when you find a channel or a subject that's done on, you know, a subject, made by people who legitimately love it, that's when you can really enjoy what they're talking about. And that's what Overly Sarcastic Productions do. Their video quality is top notch. The humour is great and the quality of the commentary is perfect. Of course, we do our best to maintain an atmosphere of professionalism. Could a crazy person do that? <laughs> Your parents raised you better than this. Oh god, not the face. Ninjas, oh god. Hey, if it isn't my best buddy Patroclus. Uh, oh. <laughs> so if you enjoy history presented in an easily absorbed and entertaining funny way, and really they do a better job than me in my opinion, and if, if you also like classic literature presented in the same way, a discussion on literary tropes that appear in movies, TV shows, and of course novels, books, you would really need to go check out that channel because you will love it. Like I said, if you like my kind of content, you will love theirs. Shadiversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video we'll be looking at the best historical medieval weapons, or weapons that could have been, you know, built with medieval technology, for giants. The YouTube channel Scholar Gladiatoria has also done a video on the best medieval weapons for giants, and it'll be really interesting to see, uh, in with my video, the points where we agree and the points where we differ, so I will link his video in the description below. Snap Jelly, much smaller channel, has also made a video uh, talking about best weapons for giants, and so again, his video is also linked, so you get as many perspectives on this subject as, is, as I have found on YouTube. First big question is uh, what type of giants, because giants will vary in size heaps. There are like the giants from Gulliver's Travels, and then of course there are giants like from Game of Thrones. There are also the giants that are shown in Skyrim. There's also giants that we see in, say, Dragon Age Inquisition, and they are they're bigger than uh, double the height of a human. The interesting thing about giants, the bigger you go, the less weapons they need because they just become more of a weapon in and of themselves. So that, that's an interesting uh, observation that, that's come to my mind. Is uh, So therefore, in, all, in respect to that, the bigger you go, the less of a question what type of medieval weapons would suit them. So it, it suits us more in this discussion to look at the giants that are not as monolithically huge as they have been represented in certain types of fantasies. So I do think the Game of Thrones kind of size of giants works really well for this discussion. The next kind of thought is what creatures would they most often be fighting and I'm going to be using the standard that I have with all my other fantasy creature weapon video stuff is generally fighting humanoids that are human size specifically because I know you know hobbits and uh, dwarves are humanoid but they're not human size. The advantages that these giants would get because of their size mass and then their strength my goodness they would be a force to be reckoned with. And this is what we really need to establish, uh, what kind of their characteristics based on their size. And something that's important to consider here is a thing called the square cubed law. We have to understand that fantasies break physics all the time. Like we discovered with uh, uh, the best weapons to fight dragons video, uh, the, so, so the way dragons are presented, they are not structured in a way that they'll naturally be able to have flight according to physics. And with giants, the way that they are structured because they are so similar to human proportions portions, they probably wouldn't even be able to support their own weight. They're, 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 the size of their bones would have to be as thick as what we see elephant's legs. Like the bones of elephant legs is what I mean when I say that. If you were to double something in size, well yes, its size is doubled, but its surface area has increased by a factor of four, and its volume would be increased by a factor of eight. And so if giants are a minimum of double the size of a human, and of course it'll depend on the weight of certain internal bodily organs, the weight of muscle compared to the weight of bone, and but generally we could say that giants would weigh approximately eight 
times as much as a regular human. This is going to affect the giant's movements and capabilities to a drastic level. They would not be able to uh, be as quick to accelerate as a human would be, or as easy to slow down as a human would be. And in terms of bone strength, well, there's a number of things. Their bones could either be much thicker, like on, uh, say, an elephant, or their bones would be made out of just much, much stronger. And, and this is where the fantasy hand wavium comes in. We can say uh, the natural bone density of of, uh, giants are crazy strong. That's the great thing about fantasy. But uh, it is funny, it would be great if uh, that was taken into account in terms of movement and stuff like that as well. What it would look like to us is that giants would appear to move slow, but it wouldn't really be slow. They would be slow to accelerate, but their maximum speed would be way faster than a human's. And it'd be a it'll take a lot more of a distance for them to slow down because of inertia. This comes in very interesting into the matter of strength because we don't really know how much of the giant strength is actually being used to support their own weight. Because if they're already supporting their own weight, it's hard to determine then how much access strength they have to lift certain objects. It means that they probably wouldn't be able to pick up nearly as much as you think they would be able to, but the force they would be able to generate due to momentum and speed because of their mass would be huge. Generally, I find that fantasies have giants being able to pick up something really huge and uh, in comparison to themselves. And then if you were to shrink them down to human size, a human wouldn't be able to pick up something that big in respect to their own size, but giants can, and so they generally even ramp up the strength of giants, more so than in relation to their own size when in actual fact, if you were trying to look at the physics and, you know, in my imperfect way of doing it, uh, if especially depending on how much strength their muscle mass would be able to produce and stuff like that, giants probably would actually be able to pick up things of less size in proportion to their size than humans are able to. That doesn't mean those things are the same weight or size as what the humans, this is a, a proportionate ratio. And so in reality, they would still be bigger and heavier than what humans can. We could also consider the intelligence level of the giants and then their weapons that they're able to produce. And that can be a, a big factor because giants don't seem to be that intelligent, yet in some cases they are. And if giants are dumb as a stump, they're not actually going to be developing very sophisticated weapons. And a log is the best. The, I think it doesn't take much intelligence to pick up a big, hitty, wacky thing, and they would be quite happy with that. But I want to look at weapons that are more sophisticated. So if giants were able to approach it with uh, tactics and intelligence, maybe humans have helped them out, like, like the humans are employing them in combat, then the humans would try and apply all their knowledge of warfare and weapons and stuff to help make this giant even more lethal than he already is. So with that in mind, I will be looking at our, uh, all any type of medieval kind of weapon strategy that could be employed. And there are other physiological things we can try and consider as to uh, how much endurance they have, do they need, how much do they eat to try and, you know, produce the energy to support the movement and uh, strength that these giants have, and all these things like that, which would be really fun, but uh, what you would, what we would find, just like what we've already done, is that the answers would most often contradict how giants are portrayed in most fantasies and stuff like that. Because in most fantasies, they eat as much uh, according to the si same size ratio as humans, basically. They have no real issues uh, in terms of uh uh, how hot they can get because of excessive movement, how easy it is for them to cool down, and their endurance seems to be at the same. So that's what we need to go with. But with all the other analysis that we have to do, even if the physics, when you really think about it, and this is what I, and I love doing this to represent, show to you that uh, it would be great if more fantasies really thought about the physics involved with these fantasy creatures because it would make things more realistic, meaning believable and then immersive. But to be fair, with all the other interpretations of these creatures that have come before, I just need to go with what the fantasies have done because and even though it's not really explained, it uh, doesn't make as much sense when you try and look at the science of it. Because fantasy. And with all this in mind, now we can start to have a look at the weapons. Well, like I kind of mentioned uh, uh, already, but I emphasize because the larger giants are, the more of a weapon they are inherently. But that doesn't mean that they're not just a weapon with uh, being double the size of a human. Uh, they, they're a weapon, absolutely. The amount of force they can generate just through natural limb movement is insane. So one of the primary weapons, and really one of the more like most effective ones, are because in general terms, like you in combat, you generally weaponize the limbs that are uh, 
best able to get access to your opponent and inflict damage, inflict damage on your opponent. So for us humans, we generally fight with our hands, don't we? Or, or we hold things in our hands and fight. But when, say, a little dog is trying to nip at you, do you lean down and punch it? No, no, what's the closest limb to that? Your boot, and so you kick the thing off. So this concept already exists very much, and so with giants, uh, depending on their size, but still just being double the height of a human, uh, they already have a limb that's far closer to the humans than their hands, and that's their feet. So then, following this same logic, I think their first order of business in terms of which part of my body should I weaponize to fight these creatures, they would weaponize their feet, I, in my opinion, before they weaponize their hands. Not saying they won't, because the more weapons the better, but, but first and foremost, feet. Easiest one, st steel capped boots. My goodness, and look, yeah, steel cap boots, you know, was that a traditional medieval weapon? No, no, not really. Yeah, steel cap boots, did they even need it? They might have, but... But if a giant really wanted to be nasty, he would put spikes on those boots or other bladed things. Now, now spikes can be, there are pros and cons because uh, depending on how many spikes, things can get stuck in them and you don't want your boot get to get stuck into whatever you're kicking. So th there's a bit of a, a con in relation to that. But even just kind of knobs, all right, like a stud, the, the steel on it. What that means is, is if there are parts on this steel cap, the toe of, uh, you know, the, of this giant's foot, that have smaller surface area, it means the force that their boot, yeah, which would just be huge already, would then be again concentrated to a smaller area, and therefore deal way more damage. This doesn't mean this would be the only uh, means to weaponize them, because uh, they still have their arms, and their arms are doing nothing, so, so if their main weapon are going to be their feet just booting these humans wherever they go. Oh, it would be a bloodbath. What do they want to do with their hands? And in terms of medie medieval combat, which is the baseline that we're going off, one of the other mentalities that do exist is that uh, if you have offense covered well, and generally say if you have a weapon in one hand, your offense uh, your offensive ability is pretty good. What are you going to do with your free hand? Well, let's cover defense. But this is the interesting thing uh, about uh, defense. It, it would dep depend on how much is needed because uh, with the same, you know, uh, logic, if uh, offensive covered with one hand, what can I do with this hand? Okay, what about defense? But if you're already defended adequately enough, say if you're wearing full plate armor, steel, well now I can, you know, increase my offensive ability and make me even more lethal. So I could have two weapons or I could use a two-handed weapon and go nuts. So then what would it take for a giant to be adequately protected? And uh, this is this is interesting. Uh, because we know how effective padded armor can be. I've made many videos on this subject. Depending on how well a giant would be able to handle our heat, endurance, and how hot they can be, because I, I wonder if uh, increasing the thickness of the layers of uh, padded type of armor would increase uh, how uh, exhausted and tired and hot it would get inside, or if their ability to cool down is uh, about the same to humans in terms of ratio. But still, if a giant just wore a padded armor, and uh, it's interesting, uh, like padded armor has certain limits for humans in terms of thickness for several reasons. One is maneuverability. The thicker this garment gets, the stiffer it gets and the harder it is to move around because you've got this thick garment on. The next thing is how hot it does get inside. So, so that's something to consider. But with a giant's larger surface area, which is more area for heat to escape and maybe hopefully cool down, that might mean that they could handle a thicker insulative layer than what the average human can be. And then just by virtue of their size, it would not restrict them in movement nearly as much as a of humans. So the average, say, Gambeson for a giant, so if Gambeson is that thick, like, like giant Gambeson, could be like, could be this thick, or like something like, like that, right? You'll never cut through that stuff. You'll never get through it with an arrow. Like, like this stuff would be as difficult to deal with as plate, but offer even more protection because it would be so good against blunt force, which is generally the weakness for plate. Because if I'm wearing plate, you get a big mace, and that's how you hit him. It'd be like hitting a big padded pillow. You would not be able to harm this giant at all. In fact, uh, padded armor would be a better pick for them, in my opinion, than steel armor. And if they just, you know, cover head to toe, and it could be hides of beasts, that, that could be a perfect substitute instead of actual laser laser linen, but then if they really wanted it, they could do that. All they would need then is like big padded, say, mitten, glove kind of things, perhaps, and a good helmet, 
and they're invulnerable. Oh, I good, uh, you would only be able to kill them with siege level weaponry then. But this also means then that uh, the hands are freed up again for more offensive weapons if they want. Now, does that mean that they are, uh, uh, like when I say invulnerable, how invulnerable they are, the siege level weapons could be a danger for them. Just like there are certain weapons that are still a danger for the person in plate. And so what did the person in plate armor do when they still felt threatened? Another defensive item. A shield. In fact, this is one of the theories which say that the heater shield was still used when people were wearing plate armor, and why the heater shield is so much thicker in comparison to other types of shields, because it was there to block the types of weapons that could, you know, damage someone in heavy armor still. And so perhaps a giant might still want a shield to block the huge death arrow things from ballisters and stuff and catapult shots and, uh, you know, the types of, uh, you know, offensive weapons that could potentially injure and kill the giant, he might still want a shield. It depends. Would he need two? No, I think one would do the job perfectly uh, fine. And then he still has a hand for a fence. And, then that, and the shield is still optional. He might think all this padded, good helmet, both hands. So then what are the best weapons for a giant in that case? Well, uh, most of the uh, people, uh, uh, enemies the giant will be fighting would be waist height or even lower, depending on the giant, because there is some root, like, you know, when I say we're looking at this size of giant, uh, given, uh, not really, yeah, give a few meters, not take a few meters, so you go down a few meters, is, yeah, the giant's a bit too short in my opinion, but I reckon they could be even a couple of meters bigger than, say, just double to a human. And if that's the case, they, uh, the hands, you know, are, uh, Maybe head height to a human, but probably want some reach to hit them at a further distance from them. Best weapon in this regard? A good old club. And this is funny, where we think, well, uh, isn't that the idiot weapon for a giant? Uh, not necessarily. See, clubs are great in the right context, okay? They're great against people in armor. They're great at smashing other things. They have a decent kind of target area. And this, this is an interesting point. You see, swords have a good target area where the entire length of their blade is a part that you can potentially injure someone, as opposed to, say, an axe, where the, uh, the actual offensive area is much smaller. The difference between a sword and a club is that a sword is thin, club is thick. Bigger surface area, so which it has great a potential hitting more than one person in one swing and they have so much force that they don't necessarily need to focus that force into such a fine thin sharp edge is what a sword enables to do because a sword is just a, this a profoundly effective force multiplier because it's uh you know focusing that force to the thin bladed edge which means the force that an average human can produce can suddenly be far more lethal that's not necessarily needed for a giant because the force they can produce is already massively lethal therefore having something with a Big, a bit, bit, a bit of a bigger surface area just means, like, as I mentioned, greater potential to hit more than one person. There is another weapon that I think would be absolutely brilliant for a giant, and I've had this thought idea for ages, and it's a weapon that's not generally employed much for... People think, you know, for fantasy, we'll give it... I'm talking about the scythe, of course. Grim Reaper scythe is not really an effective weapon at all, but yeah, it's come up now and then, like Soul Calibur had a, a, a character who used a scythe in one of the versions of the game. No, that's not an effective weapon at all. Its weight would be off and all these things, but interestingly, for a giant, it would be really effective, but not the fantasy version. I'm actually talking about the proper historical scythe, which was meant for cutting grass. You see, contrary to the fantasy version of a scythe, a, a proper, you know, tool scythe, uh, the blade is not in line with the shaft. It's actually offset a bit. So on angle, when you're and they have handholds, and on angle, when you're holding it down, the blade is actually in line with the ground level. And that's the kind of design that this giant would have. And the amazing thing about the scythe is, remember that uh, striking ratio I was talking about a sword? It basically does that, because this was the other thing why uh, swords weren't as effective, in my opinion, as uh, for a giant than, say, a human, is because a lot of the striking area that uh, the sword gives the giant would not be as employed as much because you still need to reach these little, you know, ant people that you're killing had her away from you, which means the main business end, even just from reaching to the ground, is going to be on the end of the sword already, which is another point in favour of the club. And it means a lot of the, the danger area closer to the hilt of the sword is kind of useless. But a scythe takes that 
It takes a blade of the sword and puts it all on the ground, on the, on the area where the enemy is, which just utilizes the striking blade of the sword, essentially, 100%. Whereas before, if it was just a sword on a handle, there's wasted blade that wouldn't be getting used nearly as much. But scythe? Absolutely. And so a giant with a scythe would just be able to just oh, slash swaths before him and just plow through uh, troop formations and things like that. Now, I, I know Matt mentioned scythes in his, own, in his video, and I'm not copying Matt because it comes up there. This was an idea I had previous to him even making his video, and I do want to address one of the points that he mentioned about it, which is a point of difference, because when he said scythes, he, th he thought it wouldn't be as effective because terrain isn't always flat and that would be a detriment for the swings. In my opinion, the answer to that is just make it a little shorter so it doesn't have to be so close to the ground. A, a scythe that slashes at head height is not only just as deadly, probably even more so than a scythe that's built to slash closer to the ground. And that means the differences in terrain would be nowhere near as much of a problem. And then I would go at, like a step further and alter the design of a scythe. You see, a scythe is curved, try, and when you're slashing the grass, the grass gets kind of caught in the curve and falls within the cutting area to get cut off. You don't really need that design element for a weaponized scythe for a giant. In fact, it would be far better if the blade was double-edged, which means after the first slash, you can just bring it back for another one! And of course, when you put a double edge on a blade, it's better to be straight than curved. So it would be a straight bladed, double-edged kind of sword blade on the end of a big pole and that would be so deadly. And then they could just slash through their opponents, kicking anyone off to the side and <laughs> oh gee, that would be vicious. So the most sophisticated developed weapon, medieval style weapon that could be built with medieval technology, in my opinion, would absolutely be the scythe. And that's weapon in their hands, okay? And that's not taking into account uh, other types of ways giants can be employed in combat. So I'm talking if they're fighting humans and for a single hand, and I, the clubs can be double handed, but clubs are also a really good pick for a giant for my own reasons as I've mentioned them to you. The next and last topic to cover about giants, weapons and such is ranged weapons. Well, as you probably would be already be able to tell if you've seen any of my fantasy creature videos, stuff like that, Bows are really, really good weapons. And uh, if there is any creature that has greater physical abilities in some way than a human, that generally means a bow will work even better for this creature than it does for humans, which makes them a great pick. Really, the, the only uh, creature that's come up that bows wasn't good for were the little guys, the halfling, hobbits, uh, gnomes, and goblins. Though something that a lot of people miss, is, I was saying in my elves video that humans would be able to be as accurate and deadly with a bow as elves would be. If you've missed that, I encourage you to probably go watch it again and listen to what I was saying because I don't want to rehash it here. And dwarves are far more equivalent as well. So elves and dwarves, but but still, okay. Giants, right? Well, of course. Uh, giant, bigger. Uh, so, sorry, bow, good. Bigger bow, better. Giant, humongous bow. I absolutely love that scene from Game of Thrones where you see the normal person shooting up at the ice wall and the giant comes in with his bow. Uh, it would be nowhere near as accurate. The, the thing about bows it, it is really the accuracy thing. And the other problem is, is uh, they can't do huge amounts of damage. I mean, unless people are lined up in a row and you can kind of get several in one line, a giant bow doesn't have huge damage potential. And uh, it would still be great. I'm not saying it wouldn't be. I just think there's a, there'd actually be a much better ranged weapon for a giant than a giant bow. And that is rocks. Just give them a big rock in a hand and they can throw them and my goodness, that would be crazy deadly. But is there a way to weaponize thrown rocks a little bit more? Oh yes, there is. Slings. A giant with a giant sized sling that can hurl Oh my goodness! Josh! Can you imagine a giant like woof, 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 the, the amount of rotational energy that would be uh, developed by this giant? It would be faster and more deadly than any trebuchet could ever hope to achieve. And depend and the size of the rock. So I so say giant hand. Like if you just wanted to heft a rock in his hand, so something like that big, right? But even something that big, but that big, even bigger. If he if he if you wanted something this big, <laughs> put in a sling thrown by a giant? Oh my goodness! 
Just think of how much force a rock would have if a giant just picked it up and hurled it, all right? That I, I almost equate to the amount of force maybe from a, a standard trebuchet, depending on the size of the giant, of course. But as we know, trebuchets were pretty good at knocking down castle walls, but, but not as good as uh, certain video games propose as well. Uh, it, it's a balance. They, they weren't as good as people think, but they were still effective because they were used in history and they did knock down castle walls. Of course, it didn't mean the castle fell then because the rubble of the wall doesn't disappear like in video games, it just falls down and you still have a barrier between you and getting inside the castle. So a lot of people miss the, the difficulty in trying to knock down castle walls, trebuchets and other things like that. But what I'm saying here, if we can equate a thrown rock from a giant to about the same as a thrown rock from a trebuchet and then combine that with the amount of energy uh, that can be produced through uh, a, a sling, <laughs> Maybe then these stones would be as destructive as many video games and movies show them to be uh, against castle walls. I, I, demolish, and imagine one of these things thrown through a, uh, you know, a line of enemies, like a big giant. Woof, woof, woof. <sighs> this would be more deadly, in my opinion, than uh, a giant using big boots with uh, clubs or scythes or anything. Big rocks thrown from slings at a massive, unbelievable distance. Rocks traveling so so crazy fast as a result of such size, you could decimate human armies from a distance. In fact, in my opinion, this would be the most deadly feared weapon that a giant would ever uh, use and then become the iconic weapon of the giants. Slings, slings and giants, match made in heaven or hell, depending on what, what's happening. If they're on your side, heaven. If the fighting gets them, yeah. It's a, yeah, hell. Slings and giants. Let's make it as synonymous as spaghetti and meatballs, people. <laughs> I would run if I, <laughs> like, I don't care if I'm a level 100 whatever, right? If a giant or at a distance with a big rock in a sling, I don't care how many pluses my armor have, I would leg it. But there you go. This has been the best medieval weapons for giants. Thank you for watching guys, I hope you've enjoyed, it has been a pleasure to make it as always. Uh, also, just wrapping this up, I do again encourage you to go check out Overly Sarcastic Productions, phenomenal YouTube channel, and of course I hope to see you again. Until that time, farewell.